Let's learn how we can take AI code as if we have no coding experience and push it to a real website like you saw on that phone. Therefore, by the end of this video, you're going to finally learn how to take code that you find in those little AI model chats and actually use it. Sound good? Let's jump in. Best showcase how to do this, I'm going to use Gemini here. We're going to put in a simple prompt, get some code, and see how we can actually start leveraging it. Obviously, with these AI models, you could use ChatGPT as well, Claude. Etc. Let's go and begin here. So let's assume we were creating a chat. I'm gonna say let's build a React based landing page. Have the landing page be for my AI newsletter. I'm gonna hit enter here, and we're coding. Now the typical workflow here is that you're coding, and then you get a nice little preview section of like what it looks like within the actual AI chatbot interface. But the one thing that, as you probably already know, is frustrating is like, okay, but Corbin, I actually want to use this code. I want to take it out of this so i'm gonna show you how to do that throughout this video i'm gonna be pointing at different tutorials that will reference how to do certain tasks more in depth i just wanted to give this real quick video just to give a brief overview of simply code here actual output here one other thing that i forgot to point out for that prompt make sure you have canvas selected here so select that then put in your prompts so it's generating the code here and this is what i'm talking about we get our preview but what do we do now Assuming we went back and forth here, added stuff, removed stuff, we get to a point that we like it. So we got AI newsletter here. Scroll down, expert insights, ready to dive in, newsletter CTA, looks good. So the first thing that's native to Google Gemini is our ability to actually export this code directly into Replit. So in order to do that, we can close out of the Canvas UI here, come down to share and export and export to Replit. Now I'm gonna be honest with y'all, sometimes this little export to Replit feature it's not showing up. It's a little buggy. So if you run into this issue, I would suggest you just take the code that you currently created up to that point, paste it into a new chat and just essentially proctor Gemini to be like, Hey, give me this option. When you do that, you're going to be taken to Repli here and you can run it, see it in an emulator and go as far as deploy as well. So the first video I'll leave in the description down below, if you want more context of what Repli is and how to use Repli, it's a fast seven minute video. Check it out. In this video though, I want to show you how to take this code and actually push it to something like cursor AI. I like using IDEs like Cursor AI, VS Code, Windsurf when doing development as it's just better development flow and process. You're able to connect it to GitHub. GitHub's like the cloud. Think of it like Google Docs rather than a doc on your computer. Obviously, there's more tail of that version management and stuff of this nature. For now, let's connect it. So first things first, let's create a folder. When I say create a folder, I quite literally mean right click on your desktop, new folder, give it a name, put in your documents, wherever it is, just create a folder. It's coming to my desktop, new folder test folder code whatever it is just name it select open project once you have it open you'll see it all the way up here in the top left and on top of that let's open up terminal here simply coming down here clicking terminal we are inside the folder because you see it right here so now that we're here this next line if you've never coded before you're 100 percent going to get an error something along the lines of you don't have node.js doesn't recognize the command don't worry. This is where my 28 minute video showing you in depth how to set up your development environment comes into play. I'll leave it down below. It should be something along the lines of how to use cursor AI for beginners. What's key here is that the steps and workflow that's shown there can work with any of these type of IDEs like VS code and above the board. But once you get it working and it's good to go, we hit enter. What this is doing is this is creating a development environment, which is a react based app. Do I want to proceed? Why for yes. If you don't want to watch that 28 minute video, I'll leave this doc in the description down below as well. This shows you exactly how to install Node.js, which is required for React based apps. I messed up a little bit of the command code here. We got to add that dot, then we can hit enter. It wants to install a dependency. We're going to hit Y. It does have a slight issue with my naming my folder. Essentially, we can't have spaces in the folder. So that's good to know. So I'm going to remove those spaces. So with the spaces removed up there, we're good to go. Same exact line. Once we're in terminal, you'll notice that we're inside the folder. This is where we're actually just pushing the code. Enter. And here we go. We're installing a React based app. Now, what you'll notice is that while it's creating this, it's going to be creating a bunch of files over here. Don't worry, nothing, nothing crazy is going on. This is supposed to happen. From here, if you go to app.js, this is where we render all of our code. When I say render, when you see a website and you go to a website, it's all rendered. Like YouTube right now, this is all rendered. So we get to a point that we like our code. Let's grab it. You may need to format it. So I'm going to just say, please output as app.js and app.css. So coming over here, we're going to scroll all the way up here. And the beginning of our JS file will always start with a React import. So first, let's go ahead and copy over the CSS of our app. Now, CSS is what makes it look pretty. So like all the like rounded corners, the different coloring, etc. JS is more of the structuring. So for now, let's go ahead and just copy it all. Command C, Control C, app.js, and paste over. Now, I just want to give like the CSS and the JS as well, not necessary. Just import the React here. We go. And then simply just grab all the components. Don't worry, I'll explain what's happening pretty soon here. And we're going to paste. 
There we go. Seems like I got an error here, but that's just a curly bracket situation. I guess if you ever run into this situation, always make sure your code is closed. So we got curly bracket here. Enter, enter, curly bracket there. We're good to go. Uh, this essentially is when we're adjusting the font size or different things when the screen gets smaller. Well, let's get to the big part here where I'm gonna show you how to actually render this code and explain a little bit of all the structuring and what everything means. Because the big thing with coding now with artificial intelligence is it's less on the fact of knowing what every single line means. That's how it was in the old days. Like you had to know everything. Now it's more of how do you tell the AI exactly what you wanna do based off your conceptual knowledge of software architecture. Sounds a little confusing. It's a lot simpler than you think. First off, just how do we render this? As anytime you watch a tutorial and you're like, what do I do, what do, I do with the code? NPM start. These kind of command lines of NPM start, I wasn't just born and I knew it was NPM start. Takes practice, takes learning. So NPM start, enter. This is gonna run our environment locally on our machine, or in other words, if I was not connected to the internet, I could still run this. We are getting an error here, and it looks like the way that Gemini wanted to approach this was creating a global styles on top of the CSS, which is a little weird, but let's go ahead and just import it over. That was the top line of this code, which honestly, let me just import the CSS. That's gonna be way easier. And the reason I bring this up, and you might be asking yourself, why am I showing all these different errors? Is because at the end of the day, when you're coding with AI, you're gonna get weird stuff like that, where for some reason, instead of importing it from the app.css, it wanted to do this weird global styles wrapping. This just comes with learning, and when you have more experience, you'll be able to point out stuff like this with AI and be like, what are you doing? This is not how you do it. <laughs> so AI does hallucinate with coding, which you probably already know. So by simply just importing the app.css file, we have our landing page here. When it comes to stuff like Corbin, how'd you know to do this rather than that weird thing Gemini was doing? That comes with a little bit of experience, obviously watching videos like this, you get context like that. But before I tie up this video here and just kind of run through this code real quick, just so you can start building the bricks, build brick by brick of how to understand architecture, one last thing. Cool, we have a landing page. We're able to take code of an AI chatbot and actually render it onto a website page. But the fundamental thing we're missing here is version control and the ability to deploy this to a real website link e.g the ability to share this with your friends put it on facebook be like i created a new app let me give you some resources for that the first major video that i suggest you check after this for like the extra layers of software and web app development that are fundamentally important is going to be that 28 minute video showing you how to connect this to github showing you how to install all relevant dependencies and when I say dependencies, this, if you ever played video games and you're like, I need to install this update in order to play multiplayer, think of dependencies like the same way in the sense of, in order for me to do this functionality, I need to install the update. A good example of that is that I want to have monetization for my app. You need to install the Stripe dependency, which is gonna be your payment processor. 28 minute video is cool. And that's like, Corbin, I just wanna get as much meaty knowledge as possible as fast as possible. Let me reference two other playlists that might interest you because you might be like, you know what? This guy doesn't teach that bad. I wanna check out some other stuff from him. I'm gonna reference a three hour, 30 minute video that showed you how to build out a real landing page from zero lines of code all the way to webcafeai.com. Look it up. I show you how to build that. It basically cost me nothing. The only thing that cost associated with that is a $1 domain. And then for some of y'all that are more looking towards doing something a little bit more crazy, like understanding how to build out backend infrastructure, which is a little bit more complex. I built out a two hour series that's completely free that shows you how to build out real functions. And one of the functions I built out in that series is how to create a chat completion request or essentially an AI chatbot that you can access through your web app. All really cool stuff, all in the description down below. So check it out. All right, coding 101 with Corbin Brown. Let's just jump through this real quick. Rule of thumb, you're gonna import a CSS file for all the little cool stuff like navbar. What's the navbar, Corbin? The navbar, or the navbar is obviously the top thing, but if you come over here and you know use command F, control F, so this, the CSS here. Okay, here we go. What is happening with the navbar, right? So we're dealing with the position sticky, so it stays on the top. There is a backdrop filter, the color of the actual navbar itself, the opacity, opacity is like, is it transparent? Everything of this nature. Now, a lot of this stuff is gonna be very overwhelming in the beginning, such as what the heck does padding mean, Corbin? This is very much just plug and play. Okay, you don't know what padding means? Put 10 here. Save. Oh, that's what padding means. It made the nav bar huge when it came to this. So a lot of this is plug and play in the beginning, just to understand what it means. Of course, using something like cursor AI, 
We can come here, hit Command K, ask a question about the code, and keep learning. So that's that situation. So the CSS is what makes it look good. The JS is the underlying structuring of that. So you have, you know, more global or parent-oriented CSS files like this. And then you could have like nesting of other CSS files. Not CSS files. <laughs> CSS classes and elements within a CSS element. I know it's CSS inception. You'll learn as you keep going here. The last thing I want to show you based off this file here that might be a little confusing is how it's rendering the underlying application. So we got navbar const. Okay, cool. We got hero and we got features and we got a return statement for each one. But what's really happening here, if we scroll down, is that we then come down to our final element, which is the app itself. And what you'll notice is, look at this, it's calling back to these. So we got the nav bar, we got the hero, we got the features, got the call to action. So for example, hero, command F, come up here. This is all of this code and that association. So then when we render it, we only need to do it with one line. Now here is what's happening here, but it's doing it in one file. This is what we call refractoring code which is fundamentally extremely important for front-end development, for making it scalable, legible, readable, and easy to maintain. I'll leave another video in the description of me refractoring code and showing you how to do that in 10 minutes. That just about does today's video. I know some of y'all that either are new to this channel or have been with this channel, like Corbin, why were you suggesting so many videos in this video? Video, video, video. That's just because I don't wanna feel like I'm beating a dead horse when showing this kind of information as I've done a ton of in-depth videos on all these topics. These kind of videos are very much like, Corbin, I only came here for one situation. I got code in an AI chatbot. Show me how to put it into an actual repository, that little folder, and get something live, right? Get it going. I think the one thing I hate about YouTube tutorials is when they are teaching something, but don't show you the cool stuff. So many AI coding tutorials will show you, hey, look it, this is some cool code. I want to see it. I'm a visual person. So without further ado, those are two random videos. That is my face. I'll see you in the next video.